Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I want to talk to you about the all new release of Capture One. So Capture One 20 version 13.1 has just come out today and there is uh, quite a few new features and um, a few different things that I'm just going to give you a quick tour of. So the big news that came out with this was uh, they've also released a new version of Capture One for Nikon users. So previously we had Capture One Sony and Capture One Fujifilm and we now have Capture One Nikon as well. So for everybody else, <laughs> version 13.1 has a couple of biggish new features and a lot of these were things that I know people have really been looking for. So let me dive right in and show you two of them. So the first thing is the all new uh, before and after tool. So previously to show before and after you had to hold down the option key or the alt key in the PC and hold down the reset button and that would show you before and then you'd let go and you'd be back to your current view. And that was universally hated, everybody hated it. And people were asking for a simple one key solution like you have in Lightroom. And so that's what you now have. So if you look up here on the top of the interface, you see this, this before button. So if you press that, you now have your before view, press it again to get back. And the key for this is the Y key. So before, after. So that's fairly straightforward, but there's actually two modes to this. There is also a before and after slider view. So if you hold down Shift Y, or if you press Shift Y, you will switch between the two different modes. So now you can see we have the slider and you can drag back and forward to see our before and after view. So again, once you have this selected in the slider mode, you just hit Y again to turn on and off. Uh, but wait, there is more. If you have multiple images selected, so if I go and select all my images here and hit the Y key, it will show you before and after sliders on all your images and you can drag them back and forward like so. And that is the all new before and after tool. Now, if you are upgrading from a previous version and you had a customized keyboard shortcut, the Y key may have been remapped to something else. So if that is the case, you may need to go in and remap it to this new function, or you can just reset to the default keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so before I get to the, the other big new feature, I just wanted to talk about one of the little things they've done, and that is they've cleaned up some of the user interface, and the default has been redesigned slightly. So if you notice in the exposure tab, or the exposure tool tab, which is probably where you're gonna spend most of your time, they have actually laid this out a little different. And now you have base characteristics and white balance in here too, which makes more sense because th this is kind of the tool that you spend most of your time in. And that is now kind of, uh, I hate to say it, but they have changed it to look a little bit more like Lightroom. Um, but in fairness, this is kind of the, the way that most people would probably use it. And I had, in a previous version, actually customized mine to be pretty much like this. So, and I actually did, I think I have either a blog post or a video about it before. But um, yeah, so the new um, default layout is a little different from the previous version. And I think a lot of people will be happier with it. Okay, so the other big new feature is the um, clone and healing tools have got a fairly big redesign. So in the previous version, when you were cloning and healing, if you wanted to clone and heal multiple objects, you often had to create multiple layers and people hated this. It was probably the single most complained about thing that I get from writing about Capture One. Um, people all the time are always writing to me, giving out about this feature. So they have changed it. And now you can have multiple clone um, sources or heal sources on the one layer. So let me just show you quickly. So a lot of people would use kind of cloning and healing on portraits and I don't have any portraits, but I do have this rather awful self portrait that I shot for a thumbnail. And I'm just going to use this because that's all I have. <laughs> so um, to start healing or cloning, all you have to do is select the heal or clone brush. And if you look in the layers tool, you'll notice that this is all changed now and we now have new brushes dedicated for cloning and healing. So as soon as you start healing, I'm going to do healing in this, 
um, it will automatically create a new healer and it will also basically pick the best or what it thinks is the best source point so uh, I have a few anomalies let's just call them on my face here <laughs> and we can just clone these out and as you can see each time it's picking its own source point and you can also of course just drag that around and pick the one you think is the best okay and then for trickier spots sometimes it won't pick uh, a good default spot but again all you have to do is just click and drag and just a note as well i am using a quite an old computer it's a 2012 mac pro so it's eight years old and you can see the performance on this and bear in mind i'm recording the screen at the same time so let me just pick another example that's a little less embarrassing <laughs> and uh, so if i zoom in here on this landscape we have um, just some pylons here and if i want to remove these again i can use i can start with a clone or a healer and i just say for example i can just draw over this and we can move our points around if we need to but again, it usually picks a fairly good point to start off with. Okay. And again, we just do another one. And if you need to, you can go in on this and change the softness of the brush or make the brush size a little bigger. And let me just do another one. Okay, and say for example I want to get rid of this car and this time I want to use a clone layer. So again, if I pick the clone brush, and this time you have to pick your source point first. But as soon as I do this, you'll notice it has started a clone layer. And if I get back off this, you can see there's our features removed now this is just rough of course as i would have had to remove the cables and stuff but i'm just kind of giving you a demonstration so um compared to the previous version this is so much better uh, and i think everybody will agree with that um just to give you an, another one more example on kind of a more tricky subject uh, if i zoom out here um so say this uh satellite dish here and again i'm going to use a heel layer so And there it is gone. And again, you can move your source point around if you need to. So if I wanted to remove this. The other thing is be you have your, because they're on a layer, you can easily see and turn them on and off. The one other thing they talked about as well is they now suggesting that you might want to use this instead of the old spot removal tool for removing dust and spots because they feel that it does a better job of matching texture now so um and it's better for if you have kind of more oblong features so just i have a weird kind of dust spot here somewhere and we found it so just here you can see it's kind of an oblong one and it might be difficult to see in the video so we can just brush that in and it will pick the best texture to match it. And yeah, so there's our dust spots are gone. Um, to be honest, I didn't really have an issue with the old dust spot tool, but anyway, that is the, they did, they're now recommending that you use this instead of the old dust spot tool. So the other new feature that they added, which I'm not really gonna talk about in this video because it's kind of needs its own, um, is they have added a new Lightroom importer. So basically you can import a Lightroom catalog and it will take in some of the edits and try and match them. Um, it's not brilliant. Uh, it will import your catalog, but as far as translating edits goes, um, it only kind of does the basics. So I will, possibly do another video on that and talk about that again but for now um that's just be aware that that was also added in the new features that came out today so there is one other bit of news that um came out with these updates today and that is that the company itself has undergone a significant rebranding the logo has changed and the icon has changed so if i just pop over here to the finder this is the new capture one logo uh, or capture one icon 
and if you go to their website there's an entirely new rebuilt website and the individual versions of capture one now have their own different versions of the main logo i think the biggest news is probably going to be the new nikon version of capture one um but the some of the new features i think will be very welcome particularly for those who had issue with the way these worked in previous versions of the software so i hope you have found this useful if you're interested in capture one check out the links in the description below and uh, i will have more tutorials on these coming soon so don't forget to like share and subscribe and um, we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching see you next time